GWAP portal is a tool for Arabidopsis researchers to easily perform genome-wide association studies. It is a repository of genotypes, phenotypes, and genome-wide association study results. The following three videos will take the user all the way through uploading a phenotype, performing the genome-wide association analysis, interpreting the results, and finally performing a meta-analysis. The GWAP portal provides a six-step wizard to make performing GWAS as easily as possible. After creating a study in the first step, the user must upload a phenotype as a simple comma-separated value file, where the first column is the accession ID and the remaining columns are the phenotype values. Once the file is uploaded, the GWAP portal enriches the uploaded phenotypes with additional meta-information about the accessions, which can be displayed in different ways. For example, phenotype values and country of origin in a simple table. We can also visualize the data as a histogram. Or we can visualize the data as a scatter plot or motion chart where each bar or dot represents a single accession. The accessions can be color coded based on the meta information and the axis can be sorted, for example, by latitude and longitude. This can allow the user to discover interesting geographic patterns in the data. We can also visualize the geographic distribution of the accessions and based on the GPS coordinates in the metadata, place them back on the map. Once the user is satisfied with the data, they specify a descriptive name for the phenotype and optionally assign traits and environmental ontologies to properly tag the data. Once the user saves the phenotype, the data is stored on the GWAP portal. The user must now select the uploaded phenotype, and in the next step, we will choose a genotype. The GWAP portal provides several different genotypes to choose from. And since not all of the phenotyped accessions will be found in each genotype set, we display the percent overlap between the two. If the user chooses a genotype with less than 100% overlap, the missing accessions are displayed and will be discarded in later steps. Here we choose the 250K due to its 100% overlap. In the next step, the user chooses a transformation for the data, and to help make this decision, the GWAR portal calculates useful statistics for each transformation. In this example, we choose the log transformation. In step five, the user can choose to run the job on our cluster and must provide a name for the analysis before choosing the type. The GWAP portal provides three methods, AMM, a linear mixed model that accounts for population structure, KW, a non-parametric test, and a linear model, LM. The portal will calculate the estimated runtime, which is based on the number of samples in the phenotype set and the chosen genotype. In the final step, the portal provides a summary of the previous steps and settings. Once the user clicks finish, the analysis will be stored in the database and run on the cluster. The user is redirected to the detailed view of the study where the progress of the analysis can be followed. Run times range between five minutes and three hours. Once the analysis is finished, the portal displays a notification on the user account tab. Once the analysis is finished, the GWAL portal will display the data using five vertically stacked Manhattan plots corresponding to the five chromosomes. And fortunately, we find a nice peak on chromosome four. The data can be filtered by clicking on the gear icon, for example, by changing the minor allele count threshold or displaying only synonymous or non-synonymous SNPs. However, the real goal is to, is to find the underlying genes responsible for the phenotype. Zooming into the Manhattan plot will lead to the display of a gene annotation track underneath. If you mouse over any region, a blue line will appear underneath and if you mouse over a gene in the gene annotation track, the tear annotation data will be displayed. If you zoom in even further, individual gene features will be displayed. And again, you can determine if a SNP is located in a coding or a non-coding region. Unfortunately, we're not done. Often these peaks are quite broad with complex underlying genetic architecture. Here, for example, we would like to know which of the five SNPs located above the multiple testing threshold is actually the causative SNP. For these cases, it can be helpful to visualize the underlying linkage disequilibrium structure within the region. This can easily be done in the GWAR portal by clicking on a marker and selecting the option from the pop-up menu. Once the portal calculates the LD structure using the chosen marker as the focal point, the portal will display an LD triangle plot below the gene annotation track. There are two ways in which the user can interact with the visualization. Hovering over a marker in the Manhattan plot color codes all surrounding markers based on their LD, with red indicating strong linkage. Hovering over a data point in the triangle plot will highlight the two corresponding pairwise markers in the Manhattan plot. 
It's another useful feature. The user can search for any gene using the gene ID, and the gene's location will then be displayed with a vertical red line. Alternatively, candidate gene lists can be searched, and here for RPM1, the location of defense-related genes are displayed. One can also further drill down into an association by selecting more detailed information from the pop-up menu. This displays the SNP information together with the allele counts and a table of all the phenotype samples with their corresponding phenotype values and alleles. This can be useful to check the allele and phenotype of a given accession. The meta information stored in the portal can also help find interesting patterns in the data. We again display the motion chart where each dot is an accession and these dots can be color coded based on their alleles. The size of the circles can be changed based on their phenotype or on their location and we can switch to a bar chart and change the access to latitude or longitude to determine whether there is a specific geographic distribution to the alleles. This can provide a broad overview, but to determine whether the selected SNP has an effect on the phenotype, we can switch to the candlestick strip chart visualizations, which summarize the effect of the two alleles on the phenotype. We can see that the selected SNP does have a significant effect. By default, all phenotype samples are displayed, but because we have the meta information, we can see how many samples come from different countries and subset the data, for example, by only visualizing ecotypes from the Czech Republic or the United States. The GWAS portal is certainly useful for performing GWAS studies, but because the phenotypes and analyses are stored in the portal's database, we can go beyond single studies and start to perform meta-analysis, for example, of pleiotropy, where a single gene leads to multiple phenotypes. Pleiotropic effects can be quite common, but difficult to study as we lack a comprehensive genotype-phenotype map. These studies are becoming possible with the GWAS portal. After each GWAS run, we store the top 1,000 associations in a very fast database that allows us to slice and dice the data from different angles. One of the first use cases is to come to the site and look for the top results under the meta-analysis section. This displays a table of all of the associations for all of the available GWAS studies, ranked by the score of their p-value. There are currently 3 million publicly available associations. Summary statistics are displayed above the table, such as minor allele frequency, chromosome, and SNP type. The user can drill down into this huge list by clicking on a slice of any of the pie charts. For example, we are only interested in genic SNPs, so we choose the corresponding slice which filters the list to 1.5 million SNPs and updates the table. Furthermore, we can look specifically at non-synonymous SNPs, filtering our list further to roughly 300,000. Users might only be interested in specific genes, and these can be selected using candidate gene lists. By searching for flowering time genes, we can filter the list and only display associations within 20 KB of any of the genes within this list. Another use case would be if the user is interested in a specific gene and wants to know which phenotypes it is associated with. By navigating to the gene view, the database can be searched with the Tear Gene ID. This displays a gene annotation track with the gene centered inside a 10 kb region up and downstream. The GWAS portal fetches all of the associations in the database found within this region. Hovering over a study will display a blue bar in the gene annotation track that indicates the position of the most significant stint from the study. As GWAS studies often result in broad peaks, other associations from individual studies can be displayed by expanding the study of interest. The region of interest can also be changed using the sliders, and the list can be completely expanded if necessary. Because we store all of the studies in a single database, we can also search for individual accessions. One can search for COLO, for example, to see statistics regarding how many studies it has been involved in, the list of studies and phenotypes, and navigate to a specific one. We hope that this video tutorial gave you an overview of the most important features of the GWA portal. We haven't touched on all of them, such as candidate gene enrichment analysis, the SNP viewer, and the GWAS viewer, among others. Feel free to play around. GWA portal is free to use and open source. For further questions, click contact us from the landing page. And good luck solving your genotype to phenotype problem.